Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you guys about tying uh, the losing of gun rights uh, to the losing of voting rights. Okay, now before I go any further, I want to say this. Uh, my personal opinion is that if you are uh, safe enough to be on the street, you're safe enough to own a gun. Okay, now uh, but going beyond that, I think I want to present a way. Uh, for Democrats, uh, uh, city people, soccer moms, to sort of uh, think of it, right? So here's the thing: I, I, we have to be careful how we present things because we can't just expect people to come like all the way over to our point of view. Um, we have to kind of like give them like little breadcrumbs and kind of lead them across the line. Okay? So the Supreme Court has said that the Second Amendment is not a second-class right, okay? So, uh, when it comes to convictions, okay, uh, and the question becomes, should a person uh, lose their gun rights because of this conviction, um, the, the, the first question I would ask is, well, have they lost any other rights that are in the Bill of Rights, okay? Uh, have they lost their freedom of speech? Have they lost their uh, voting rights? Uh, so that would be like the uh, you know you know a a a first step, not like the last step, but the first the first question, okay, uh, that I would ask. Okay? Now, if the answer to that is uh, yes, they have done something so terrible that they deserve to lose both their gun rights and their voting rights, well, the question then becomes: Well, if it's so terrible, why have they been released back into society? Okay, so. One of the things that I have found, um, and this is in general throughout my whole life, when dealing with people uh, that that already have certain like preconceived notions that are contrary to your to your opinion, whatever it is, uh, and it could be like a business thing, right? Um, rather than tell them what the right thing is or what the correct answer, uh, basically just to ask questions. Um, to kind of like make them come around to sort of like figuring the answer on their own or realizing how weak their position is because if you can sort of get people to come up with that answer on their own they feel like well it's they came up with it so you know they feel that well if they came up with it perhaps it's the correct answer whereas if you give it to them uh, they're gonna be like well it, it came from you or came from somebody else uh, perhaps it's incorrect so so one of the things I have done in my life is I try to get uh, people with different opinions to arrive at the correct opinion by asking them a series of questions um, where they kind of come up with the answer on their own okay so so as far as should somebody uh, lose their their gun rights the question is okay well what other rights are they losing as a result of this okay um, are they losing their voting rights are they losing their um, you know whatever the freedom of speech and uh, you know a lot of times people will say that hey um, you know there are limitations on freedom of speech that they say you can't yell fire in a crowded theater right well here's the thing they don't we don't pull out people's larynx before they enter a theater everybody going into a theater is armed with a larynx and is capable of yelling fire okay uh, now there might be a couple of good reasons why they do it. for example they might actually be a, a fire going on and it might be justified okay um, or or they might be doing it to create panic in which case we don't punish them for saying the word fire what we're really punishing them for uh, is for creating panic at, and we punish them after the fact. We don't anticipate beforehand that they might create panic when they enter into a theater, right? Or just because they have larynx in their throat that they are capable of, of, of creating panic and therefore they are guilty of already having created panic even though they haven't done it yet, okay? So we wait for somebody to actually do it uh, and then we deal with it after, after the fact, okay? Now, in the case where let's say they create panic, um, you know there there's, there's there's mechanisms or there should be mechanism in place 
to deal with that, right? Like the management should be able to uh, handle that. And I mean, the way to handle that is to calmly move everybody out to the exits and then assess the situation, okay? Um, so, so the same situation occurs now with somebody that, uh, let's say, is a dangerous person. Like, how do you stop dangerous people from, you know, committing murders, okay? You, you can't just say that, hey, everybody with a pair of hands is capable of committing murder because that is the truth okay uh you can you can you can basically strangle somebody to death uh with your hands so anybody with hands is capable of murder so we don't say hey everybody with a pair of hands uh basically is capable of murder uh and henceforth we have to punish them in advance or, or restrain them in advance no we actually wait until they try to commit that murder and then ideally we try to stop them, right? And, and the way we stop them uh, is by, by, by countering that. Ideally, everybody is armed so that they are able to stop that person. So in, in, in reality, right, we don't cut people's hands off so they can't strangle people, but rather if they go to strangle people, then we try to stop them while they are doing it, okay? Um, so one of the things that I think that, that, that often escapes people um, is that we are all hardwired uh, to be murderers, right? Because basically there's a reason why humans are at the top of the food chain. Uh, anybody that says they are not capable of killing is lying to themselves, okay? Um, humans are very capable of killing. In fact, like if I watch my, 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 my kids who are four years old, uh, six years old, seven years old. I mean, basically, they are extremely violent. Okay, and it's my job as their father to discipline them um, and and basically, you know, teach them to not be violent. So the default condition of humans is to be violent. Okay, um, and it is the job of the parents to teach the kids to control their natural violence. Okay, because um, again, there's a reason why humans are at the top of the food chain. Because we are, by nature, DNA-wise, right, among the most violent creatures on the planet. Okay, um, and uh, that's just that's just reality, man. We got like five thousand years of history to to prove it. Okay, um, so uh, and one of the things I also tell people is that you know don't look at like when you look at people that are in prison because they committed murder, or they did this terrible thing or that terrible thing. Okay. You know, the, the difference between them and you is discipline, okay? Um, you are capable of the worst crimes in the world, but you are disciplined enough, you've been disciplined since you were a, ch since you were a child, to not commit those crimes, to not act out your violent tendencies, okay? So that is the difference between most of you guys out there watching this video uh, and people sitting in jail uh, for violent crimes, okay? So, so that, that's the important thing, right? because a lot of times, uh, I mean, we're, I know we're covering a lot of stuff in this video, but people, a lot of people, particularly Republicans, people that don't understand human nature, they're like, okay, a lot of people say, hey, we don't have a, a gun problem in this country, we have a mental illness problem, okay? That, but I don't think that's true either, right? Um, because, you know, people that have true mental illness don't, understand um, the result what, what are going to be the results of their actions okay so so a truly insane person uh, is a person that sits there and starts stabbing themselves and starts complaining about the pain not realizing that the reason why they are hurting is because they are repeatedly stabbing themselves okay that is a truly insane person okay? a person that does not understand the connection uh, between their actions and the results all of these people all of them um, that have committed these mass murders um, and even just just regular gang violence everything right all these all these people out there that are committing all these violent acts they all understand that the connection between their actions and the results okay so none of them are crazy okay um, they just all undisciplined and there's one way in only one way to stop them okay uh, and that is to basically when they go to commit that act of violence to stop them in the act of 
committing that act of violence, which is why everybody in society basically needs to be uh, armed uh, and trained and capable of defending themselves, okay? Uh, that's the only way that, you know, you can have a safe society, okay? And this isn't something new. Uh, this goes back thousands and thousands of years, you know, before guns were ever invented, before swords and spears were ever invented. This goes all the way back to when people were just using, you know, rocks in their bare hands uh, to kill each other, okay? Uh, the way you stop violence is you meet it with violence, right? You, you, you stop it uh, from occurring uh, with your own equal force. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop some comments below in the comments. I'll talk to you all soon.